Today we're going to clone all partitions of a hard drive to an M2 SSD drive, including the bootable Windows partition. I'll use a free program called Macrium Reflect to perform the clone. I've booted off the one terabyte hard drive after installing the M2 SSD. In addition, I've created an account in Windows so I can log in, and I've installed Camtasia so I can capture these screens. The first thing I'll do is right-click the Start button and select Disk Management. You can see that the 360GB SSD is showing up successfully. We don't need to initialize the SSD, nor do we have to create any partitions, because Macrium Reflect will handle the creation of those partitions during the clone on the fly. What we'll do is clone disk 0, which is the slow 5400 RPM drive, to disk 1, which is the SSD. Let me close this out, and we'll spin up the web browser. Let's begin by searching for Macrium Reflect Free. Click on the first result, which takes us to Macrium's website, and download the version for home use. Let's then click the Save button. This is a relatively small file, which is just a download manager stub that retrieves a larger installer later on. Click the Run button, and using the defaults, let's hit Download, after which the installation process starts. Clicking Next installs the first component, which is the pre-installation environment, or the PE components for Windows. After that, it launches the setup wizard for Macrium Reflect. Let's click Next. We'll accept the terms of the license agreement. Let's choose the Home Edition. And we'll register our software at a later time, so I'll click No on this screen. Let's keep the defaults for installation, then click Next. Finally, click Install. Let's go ahead and finish to close out the wizard and launch the actual program. Again, a registration screen pops up, which I'll skip for now. What we see here is disk 1, which is the slow 5400 RPM 1 terabyte drive. The plan is to clone all six partitions over to the new drive labeled disk 2, which is our SSD. Remember, these drives were labeled disk 0 and 1 in the disk management screen earlier, and they're now called disks 1 and 2 respectively. So don't get confused about the numbering. They've just been incremented by 1. Before you perform the clone, I highly recommend that you create a rescue disk by going to Other Tasks and create Rescue Media from the menu just in case something goes wrong. I'm going to go through the steps of creating it, because this actually saved me once as I was deleting partitions that I shouldn't have been touching. Let's click Next. Then Next again to include the drivers. We'll use the defaults here and click Next, which builds the Windows PE image. This can take a little while, so I'll fast forward. After that completes, you'll need to provide either a USB drive or a blank CD or DVD. I myself like to use the cutting-edge technology of blank CDs, so I'll insert one into my CD-DVD drive, after which I'll click Finish. Burning the CD will take some time, so let's take a quick break. Once the CD's been written, take it out of the drive and keep it in a safe place. The next step is to clone from the one terabyte hard drive shown here to the SSD. Let's click Clone This Disk and then select a disk to clone to, which of course is the SSD. Now the problem is that the source drive is one terabyte, while the SSD is only 360 gigabytes. So we won't be able to do a bit-by-bit -bit clone to the SSD. You'll notice that we have six partitions, the largest being the third one where Windows resides. All the others are in the megabyte or low gigabyte range, so by comparison they're negligible in size. It's kind of misleading because the boxes representing the partitions aren't to scale. We'll need to reduce the size of the Windows partition to make everything fit into the 360 gigabyte space. We'll start by dragging and dropping the smaller partitions into the destination box. By doing so, we're leaving the remaining space for the final partition. When I drag that down, it'll automatically resize it to fit from 918 gigabytes down to 321, using up all space in the SSD. We can now click Next. You use this screen if you want to schedule the clone on a regular basis. But for us, this will be a one-time operation, so we can skip it. After reviewing the summary, let's click Finish. 
We do want to run the backup now, but there's no need to save the backup as an XML, since again, we're only doing this once. Let's click OK. This starts the cloning process, which will take a while, so let's put some pizza in the toaster oven, and I'll be right back. OK, the clone is a success, so I'll close the dialog boxes to show you that we have all six partitions copied over to the SSD. Launching Windows Explorer and opening this PC, you can see we've got the original 1TB drive and the 360GB SSD drive here. Now all we need to do is swap these two drives, so let's go ahead and restart the machine. You'll need to press the F2 key to enter the BIOS. This is where we're going to swap the drives. Click on Boot Sequence, which shows that the SSD is the second device in the boot order. What you'll want to do is click on the SSD and click on the up arrow to move it into first place. In fact, I'll go ahead and deselect the Windows Boot Manager to make sure that the SSD is the only device that we can boot from. I'll go one step further and enter the system configuration and then drives and I'll disable SATA 0, which is the 1 terabyte hard drive, to prove that we're booting from the SSD. Let's apply the changes, save as custom user settings, click OK, and then exit, which will reboot the machine. Now when it first starts, you'll see this screen. You won't see this screen again upon subsequent reboots. What you'll want to do is click Continue in order to boot into the SSD. We're back in Windows, and though I haven't shown you the elapsed time, it has booted much faster. Let's take a look at Windows Explorer, where the C drive is indeed showing as 360 gigabytes. The older drive, of course, doesn't even appear, since it's disabled in the BIOS. Launching Macrium Reflect, we see the 360 gigabyte space, and we also see that all six partitions have successfully made it over, including the bootable Windows partition. The only thing left to do now is to re-enable the SATA 0 in the BIOS, and that'll give us the old 1 terabyte drive back, which we can then use as a storage drive. But before you start deleting partitions or files from the slower drive, make sure to successfully boot from the SSD often and over a period of time. Either that, or make sure you create an image of the original disk before erasing it.